NASCAR limiting the number of charters a team can own, plus a silly season update. Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt. Jordan Bianchi from The Athletic on Thursday posted an update on Silly Season, and one of the things in there was really interesting. According to Jordan, there is a provision in the new charter agreement, the one that's currently being negotiated between the teams and NASCAR, that would limit NASCAR Cup Series team owners to only holding three charters, meaning they'd only be allowed to field three car teams, which is interesting, right? Because we currently have three four car teams out there. I will say, according to Jordan, Stuart Haas Racing will likely not survive into 2025, and according to his sources within the team, they plan to sell off all four charters. They hope to have an announcement by the end of this month for their employees, for everybody involved, but that's what's going on there. So really going to focus on Hendrick Motorsports and Joe Gibbs Racing. And you're probably wondering right now, well, yeah, they do have four cars. What's going to happen to them? Nothing. According to Jordan, they will be grandfathered in. Think about Ferrari's agreement in the Concord deal over in Formula One and how they get paid extra money. Essentially, that's what this is going to be. They're going to be the two most powerful teams in NASCAR, getting to have four cars, getting to take more money in, and not have to sell off one of those charters. It's interesting, and it's going to spark a big debate amongst the fan base, right? Because Hendrick Motorsports, in the eyes of some fans, is you know viewed favorably favorably by nascar and same with gibbs at times because of their relationship with toyota and the amount of people that still think that nascar is bending over backwards to help toyota and that stems back about a decade but toyota's been here 20-ish years at this point so uh, at some point we got to move on from that it is an interesting topic and it's one that I didn't expect. I think that we all kind of knew that maybe NASCAR was leaning towards limiting the number of teams from four, potentially down to three, maybe even two. Three seems like a pretty sweet spot, but it does provide a number of other issues out there now, specifically around Trackhouse. Justin Marks has made no secret about it. He wants Trackhouse to be a four-car super team in the NASCAR Cup Series. Well, if you're limiting the number of charters that he can have, having a four-car team is now illegal. NASCAR is treating this like David Stern was when you were trying to trade Chris Paul to the Lakers. No, 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 we can't. That'll be too much of a super team. Oh, LeBron and everybody wants to join a super team? Yeah, we can do it for them, not for them. So it is interesting how this is going to go down, but Trackhouse cannot, apparently, won't be able to purchase four charters. Which, like I said, remains interesting because they have four drivers right now vying for cup spots. And right now, they only have two charters. They would like to land a third one. And by all accounts, they will land a third one from Stuart Haas Racing. We'll get to the rest of those in just a second. According to Jordan Bianchi, though, Daniel Suarez is very close to re-signing with Trackhouse. Which is curious because he's had an absolutely abysmal season outside of his win in Atlanta. But if there is a race in Mexico City next year, it does make a lot of sense there. So who gets that third you know, spot at Trackhouse. Well, they have Zane Smith right now under contract, and he's on loan from Trackhouse to Spire. We know that Spire is replacing him in that 71 car with Michael McDowell next year, so he's out, and they need to find a spot for him. Shane Van Gisbergen also wants to go full-time NASCAR Cup Series racing. He didn't move over from Australia to the United States to, you know, ride around the Xfinity Series for his entire career. I get it, development, all of that, but he would like to be in the Cup Series. So that leads to a lot of different ideas on what can happen here. And that merger between Collig and Trackhouse, which seemed like it made so much sense and kind of all the rumors around, regardless of what Chris Rice said, doesn't really seem like it can happen now because you can't have a four-car team. Unless, of course, they sell off one of those charters and then merge the rest of Collig Racing it. So Trackhouse is very much the curious case of Justin Marks at this point and what he plans on doing over there. One thing's for certain, though, they need to raise up their performance because right now they have just not been the Trackhouse I think everybody expected them to be in 2025. So who gets the other Stuart Haas Racing Charter? The Trackhouse is going to get one of them. That leaves three remaining. Front Row Motorsports is fully expected to take on one of those charters, so they'll be a three-car team, and they will also move into one of the Stuart Haas Racing shops for their three-car Cup Series program, as well as their Truck Series team with Lane Riggs or whoever will drive it in 2025. Now, the other two charters remain kind of up in the air. 2311 Racing, Legacy Motor Club, and Richard Childress Racing. I had heard the Richard Childress Racing charter rumor a little while ago, and I didn't fully believe it, 
just because they didn't really seem like a team that was in the market. But when you re-sign Austin Dillon on a multi-year deal and you want to have a competitive team out there, you probably need to go out and find another charter. And hopefully you can find a driver that can compete with Kyle Busch and help try to make that team better. Because right now, Kyle's just carrying RCR like he's Dale Earnhardt, and it's really not working out too well for anybody involved. I mean, he's telling Ricky he sucks as bad as Ricky, and we'll be honest, JTG Doherty Racing kind of sucks at times. So that's not exactly ideal for Kyle. So who could be in that third seat at RCR? According to Jordan, Noah Gragson would be a perfect fit over there, which is, again, curious because they have Austin Hill under contract. And by all accounts, it seems like Austin Hill would like to go to the Cup Series. He did turn down college racing for the 2024 season, instead re-signed with RCR in the Xfinity Series. He does have good sponsorship backing from United Rentals as well as Bennett. So moving up to the Cup Series seems logical, but he signed a multi-year Xfinity deal with RCR for this year and beyond. Interesting. So if they were able were able to land Noah Gragson, that kind of fits the RCR mentality, right? Noah fits the bombastic attitude that they have up there in Welcome, North Carolina. And he's not afraid to throw hands, right? RC apparently isn't afraid to throw hands either, even though he's an old man and would 100% get beat up. But that's neither here nor there. That's for the comments to decide, even though they're somewhat delusional at times, especially on TikTok. The YouTube comments are usually pretty... Um, pretty normal, pretty uh, pretty sound in their reasoning. So that moves us on to the other one. Legacy Motor Club, if they were to land a charter, it seems like Corey Heim might be in play there. 2311 Racing, again, Corey Heim could be in play there as well. Things might be a little bit more up in the air about who they go out and get. So now onto the driver market, because that's kind of the big talking point at the moment. Chase Briscoe, apparently is the hottest name in the driver market right now. And one team executive told Jordan Bianchi that Jordan, uh, Chase Briscoe is a guy that you go out and you attempt to sign even if you don't have a spot for him at the moment. That's a banana's take to me because the guy's a one-time NASCAR Cup Series winner. And yeah, does he overachieve at times? Sure, but he also underperforms a lot of times as well. Ford is still very high on him, and Wood Brothers appeared to be the leaders in the clubhouse for Chase Briscoe's services in 2025. Harrison Burton out. Where Harrison Burton goes doesn't really seem like anybody has an idea at this point, but he does have backing from Dex Imaging, so he could probably land a pretty good Xfinity ride at the end of the day. Chase Briscoe goes over to the 21 car. Now, no Gragson, rumored to be going to RCR if he doesn't end up there. He could end up at Front Row Motorsports, right? If they add a third car over there, they also have to replace Michael McDowell, departing from that team. Todd Gillen appears to be remaining at FRM. So FRM could take on Cole Custer, could take on Josh Berry, could take on Noah Gragson, could take on Riley Herbst. FRM is apparently now the same people that will once again be holding the key to Silly Season, much like they did last year as well as with Michael McDowell. So there's a lot of interesting things happening. Maybe the most interesting part of this driver market is what could happen with the 19 car at Joe Gibbs Racing. If Martin Truex Jr. retires, Eric Almirola could be in play to replace him in that 19 car. It's like failing upwards at this point. It's insane to me that he could leave a Stuart Haas racing team, which is just a sinking ship. It's like Titanic. Everybody's at the very tip top, just trying to not go into the water. And then he jumps ship and he's like, all right, I got to get out of here. I got to save myself. Sorry, Rose, get off the door. I'm taking it. And he gets out of there. He signs with Joe Gibbs racing um, because God wanted to put him into the Xfinity car, which is totally fine. He does well over there. He wins a race. He finally gets that win for Joe Gibbs. And now if Martin Truex Jr. retires, he could be sliding into a really, really good cup program. It makes no sense. They have Chandler Smith under contract. I don't necessarily think Chandler Smith is as great of a prospect as some people, specifically a rosy-cheeked uh, spotter from South Carolina, thinks that he is. But he could be a formidable driver by all accounts. Maybe you take a shot on him versus Eric Amarola. Eric Amarola has a vast body of work. Somewhere around 400-ish NASCAR Cup Series starts, probably. And he's got three wins. It's not exactly like they have a diamond in the... Uh, not, like they have a ringer waiting for them to put into the car over here. He's not even a diamond in the rough. He's just in the rough at this point. So that's bizarre to me. But according to Jordan, it does appear that Martin Truex Jr. could be back in that car in 2025 because apparently he's still having fun, not ready to go set sail on that boat yet. And then to round out the driver news, Bubba Wallace is 
closing in on an extension with 2311 Racing to keep him in that 23 car going forward. Obviously, he doesn't have the wins that he needs, but he has had a really solid playoff performance in 2024. He continues to bring a lot of sponsorship and a lot of money to that team. It's a good business decision to keep him there, and hopefully they can figure out how to convert that speed that they have into more race wins going forward. Silly season is getting kicked off, and it's probably going to heat up over the next two weeks here, especially as we get into the Coke 600 this weekend and then coming out of the Coke 600. Obviously, if Stuart Haas Racing stays by what they kind of have said internally, that they want to have this sort of resolved by the end of the month, then things are really going to start to kick off. Obviously, we still need NASCAR and the teams to sign a charter agreement going forward, but the three-car limit will certainly play a different role going forward, and I think we could see some teams merge because of that going forward as well and the cost of entry barrier for some people to join the sport some new money to come in maybe some people to buy into a team remains to be seen but let me know in the comments what you think about all of this like and subscribe to the channel follow me on tiktok at break hard instagram and twitter at break hard blog